Hey guys, I'm just gonna do a quick little video showing you how to use aliases. So an alias is basically a redirecting uh, file or folder. It's basically a way of redirecting your computer to a different location. Um, I use it three different ways, so I'll show that in the video. Um, one is just um, accessing folders or different locations on my computer from the desktop. Um, the second way uh, I like to use it is for redirecting files um, or folders to an external hard drive that comes in really handy if you've got a big program like for example Omnisphere and you've installed it on your hard drive um, but you're running out of hard drive room um, what you can do is use an alias to redirect the Steam folder which is the folder that holds all the um, samples and so that's a big 40 50 gig um, folder and you can move that Steam folder to another location um, free up 40 50 gigs on your hard drive and it still runs seamlessly without you having to reinstall the whole program from scratch again um, So I'll show you how to do that. The third way I like to use aliases is Inside a door like inside main stage um, instead of having to put for example 10 or 20 pianos if you want to use a piano on a whole lot of different patches you only have to put the piano in once and then create aliases for all the other patches so it means you're reducing your ram it means smoother transitions between your patches because it's not actually playing um, another piano sound it's playing the same piano sound so it doesn't cut off this is a really great way of saving resource inside your templates so i'll start off with the most basic way and then i'll go to the most advanced way so the first way I'll show you how to use it is by redirecting from my desktop to my downloads folder. So the reason why I've set up an alias here is because I airdrop a lot of things from my iPhone and my laptop to this iMac. And I don't want to have to keep going to this location. I just want to have an easy access from my desktop to get those files. Um, so as you see, I've double clicked down and it's opened up my downloads folder. Um, the location for that is Macintosh hard drive uses Peter James downloads. So I'm just going to go step back and show you what I did. So here's my downloads folder. Everything that I airdrop ends up in there. There's actually nothing in there at the moment. Um, I just right mouse click and click make alias. Now all I do with this is I drag it to wherever I want it to be, which is um, obviously my desktop. Um, I've already done it before, but now I've got two set up. And then if you want, you can rename that and you don't have to have the name alias at the front. You have to uh, move it before you can delete the uh, word alias, otherwise it'll be a double file name and it won't work. So once you've moved it, then you can remove the um, alias. Um, obviously if I do that, there's already one there, so it's gonna come up as an error. So I won't do that. And I'm just gonna delete that, put it in my trash. Okay, so that's the first way um, that I like to use aliases. The second way is, like I was saying, uh, for big folders and sample libraries like Omnisphere. So I'll show you how to do that now. Um, first of all, you need to locate uh, your Steam folder. I've done this just before. Um, this is a great program, Easy Find. I find that using the search bar from um, Apple doesn't always find all the hidden files. So this program, Easy Find, I think it's free online, seems to find all of the files um, and doesn't hide them like Apple does. I don't know why they like to hide all the files. I guess it looks cleaner, but it's a little bit frustrating not being able to get to all these files. So this one um, seems to search the whole hard drive. Um, so what you need to do if you've got this one is just go to Macintosh hard drive. I'm just gonna type in Steam there and it's gonna find my Steam folder. Obviously it's found everything with the name Steam. So I'm just gonna go down until I find uh, my Steam folder. I think it's this one. You can double check it by just clicking it once. And yep, Spectrasonics, that's the Steam folder. I'm gonna double click that to take me there. Close this. And we're in our Steam folder. Now, what I probably should have done is gone one back. So instead of being inside my Steam folder, I wanna be the folder behind that one, which is Spectrasonics. Now I can see it. Um, again, same principle, uh, right mouse click, or just hold control on your keyboard and click the mouse and you get this um, drop down menu, click make alias, and that's all you need to do. So now that's the alias. Um, what you wanna do now is move this Steam folder to an external hard drive. Um, I'm not gonna do this because it's gonna take forever because it's quite a big file, but basically what you do, move it to your external hard drive um, 
And once you've done that, once you've moved it over, then what you need to do is rename this and take off the word alias. This will not work until you've moved it and deleted it from your hard drive. And then basically what will happen is whenever your computer looks for the Steam folder in this location, it will be redirected to your external hard drive to find those samples. Okay, I'm just going to go undo because I don't actually want to do this. <laughs> Put that in the trash. And there we go. Um, okay, so the third way I like to use them is inside a door. I'm going to show you inside the complete worship bundle because I've actually set up aliases already in here. So as you can see, I've got a piano folder, an organ folder, a Rhodes folder, Whirly folder. Um, and these top 10 patches all have pianos. But the thing is, there's only actually one piano in there. All the other ones are aliases. So as you'll see, the piano in 162 is on these two. There's the close mic and the ambient. Um, but if I go to number two, Interstellar Dreams 2, you'll see at the top there's two little arrow things and that means that's an alias patch. Basically, it's not playing a different piano on um, the second patch, it's actually playing the piano from the first one. So a little trick, if you're using the Complete Worship Bundle and you're deleting and adding files, don't delete the first one because the first one holds the piano. The same applies for the organ, the first one holds the organ, the rest are all aliases for the organ, same for Rhodes, same for Rhodes 2, same for Whirly. So just keep that in mind. It's the top patch that has the piano, organ, Rhodes, Rhodes 2 and Whirly. Um, I'll show you how to do this. So it's really, really simple. Um, let's try, for example, adding a piano to a Rhodes. So how you'll do that, find the original piano patch, which is located at the top. We'll just do the close mic for now. Um, I'm going to go edit copy. Now I'm just going to go down to, for example, this one here, and then I'm going to go edit paste alias instead of paste. If you put paste, it's going to paste the whole piano there instead of redirecting it to play the piano that I just copied, if that makes sense. Okay, so now that I've added it in there, you can see the Rhodes is being played from this top one here, and the piano is being played from the top piano. So I haven't added another piano in. All I've done is told the computer whenever this um, channel strip is being played, get the piano sound from the very top. So if I play something now, let's make sure these are both. Here we go, and bypassed. What I've done is I've just added a piano to the roads um, without taking up any more RAM and without um, adding any more CPU strain. So there you go. Um, that's how you use aliases inside main stage. It obviously means you can have bigger templates um, because you don't use as much RAM, less CPU load, um, smoother transitions between patches. Um, Another quick little thing that I'll mention just before I go is let's say you've got the Complete Worship Bundle and you're wanting to swap out the piano. So obviously the 162, the piano in 162 is a free piano. That's why I included it in the Complete Worship Bundle. So people didn't need to go out and buy another piano to get a really great piano sound. But some of you might have purchased your own piano, um, for example, um, the Giant. Um, and the great thing about the way that I've set it up is if you want to add another piano into this template, you only have to swap out one piano. Um, when you've swapped out that one piano, it swaps it out for all 10. Um, so if you want any more information on how to do that, if you go to my YouTube channel, go to the search bar, just type in importing. Um, and if you go down here, importing the Ultimate Piano Collection into the Complete Worship Bundle, that's a walkthrough video showing you how to do that. Obviously, you don't have to own the Ultimate Piano Collection or the Giant. Um, you can use the same principles in this video to swap out um, the Complete Worship Bundle with any other piano that you might own. So yeah, um, that's just some more information on how to do that. So yeah, I hope that's helped. i um, showing you a few different ways that you can use aliases to help you get around your computer, help you uh, move uh, files and folders to an external hard drive, and how to use aliases inside main stage to reduce your RAM and uh, just make it a little bit smoother for you. So yeah, uh, thanks again for watching.